Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna to start once again by putting up a picture on the screen of where we are working on the pattern. So we are starting another pass across, and uh, so we're right close to that uh, left edge here. And we are almost 75% done. We're at 73.29, so yeah, we're getting closer. So I'm gonna be working a lot of the pillar, I think, today, and some of the uh, the outside there where the flowers are. So, yeah. So hopefully today things will go better. I had nothing but technical problems yesterday. I tried twice to make a video for you guys. The first time, my um, camera cut out. Decided it was out of memory, even though there was still enough. Should have been still enough on there. So it cut out midway. And um, so, yeah, I had to go through and delete a bunch of stuff and restart it and things to make sure there's enough space. So then I tried again to make a video. This time, my tablet screen recorder didn't work and uh, the file got corrupted somehow. So when I tried to use it, it was it wouldn't open, wouldn't play. Ugh. So, yeah. I gave up at that point. I just sat too darn frustrated. I'll do this again tomorrow. So, so here we are. Fingers crossed that it works. And again, if I repeat myself or whatever, I apologize because that's two sessions I had to scrap and I don't remember what I talked about. So, oh my goodness. It was not my lucky day. That is for sure. So... Yeah, hopefully. So I got a quite a bit done yesterday. I had one session. I did the very end at the right of the last pass. And then, <clears throat> pardon me, that was unusable. So then I did another session, which was me starting at this edge. And then that was unusable too. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. Gotta love technology sometimes, right? Uh yeah, so I discovered on an iPhone, <clears throat> pardon me, it's when you delete stuff, actually making it go away and free up space on your phone can be a bit of a, a pain. So restarting your phone sometimes helps, but for some things, I found I actually had to uninstall and reinstall them because even though I had no saved podcasts or downloaded podcasts in my phone, it was taking up almost a gig of memory, even though I always delete the episodes after I listen to them. And so finally I got fed up and I thought, well, maybe I'll just listen to it online. You know, I don't really need this app. So I uninstalled it. And then when I reinstall it, it's only taking up about, you know, 100 megs instead of almost a gig. So yeah, I guess it had, even though I had deleted them, like my husband, my techie husband was saying that, um, <clears throat> when you delete it, it just changes the file name and doesn't necessarily actually delete the information. So it's still there. And uh, yeah, it, there's no recycle bin on iPhones. Like he has a Samsung and it has like an actual, you know, kind of trash bin like they have on a computer that you actually have to go in and empty the recycle bin to permanently delete stuff. This one doesn't have that. So... <laughs> Pardon me. So yeah, it's a big pain. I discovered that one time with a phone I had years ago and it kept saying I had no space on it, even though I had the bare minimum on there of like, you know, my phone book contacts. And that was about it. And I had deleted so many pictures or at least transferred them to my computer and then um, deleted them off my phone. And it's still, I had no room for anything. It was always saying it was out of memory and I was always yelling at it, you know, there's nothing on here I actually had to take all the information off you know back it up and factory reset the darn thing before it would clear up any of that space so yeah that's definitely a, a flaw with that operating system I've got to say <clears throat> so yeah I got rid of a couple of games that were taking up a ton of space on there and I don't really play them anymore so <clears throat> pardon me they let me um sync it to facebook so at least my progress is there so if i ever want to uh download it and play it again i can 
But uh, yeah, what a pain. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, my husband saying when he was in the military, when they had to get rid of computers, it was a real process because yeah, again, like I say, when you delete stuff, it's still there. And if you know what you're doing, you can recover things even after they've been deleted. So he said they actually had to run a program that would overwrite the hard disk seven times. So instead of just deleting the information, it would actually write over the information with something, you know, that was not um, security, you know, sensitive. And then they had to physically destroy the hard drive. So actually take it out of the computer and like smash it with hammers and stuff so that that information was unrecoverable because yeah if you get somebody who's good enough at their job they could potentially recover the lost information so <clears throat> so I kind of went sort of more bottom up than top down in this case as you can see the colors are starting to go more vertical because of the uh of the uh, pillars so again I'm following the colors with my uh stitching here. So I may continue to work sort of bottom up. We'll see. Just kind of works out that way. And since a lot of these I already have the uh, the needles threaded, I may just do that. We'll see. So I kind of skip all over the place and just do what makes sense to me, do what I feel like. But yeah, and I think what happened with my tablet recorder is I hit pause at the end instead of stop. And then I hit stop right after I hit pause. And I think that that's what made it get corrupted. At least that's my guess. So what I should have done is press start again, let it run for a few seconds and then press stop. And I think it would have been okay, but I didn't realize that at the time. So yeah, it was uh, unusable. You know, after my big speech about how stuff should be recoverable, but yeah. I'm definitely not one of those high-tech people who could figure out how to do that, that's for sure, so. And even then, like, sometimes stuff is too damaged or degraded or whatever to be recoverable, even by the best equipment and the best knowledgeable people to do it. So, oh dear. My gosh. Yeah. Yeah, my husband was saying, you know, you see all these stuff about ransomware and they encrypt your files and then, you know, want you to pay a ransom to get it back. And he said, yeah, the problem is when they encrypt files, a lot of times they corrupt them. So even if you pay the money, the file can be so damaged you can't use it anymore. So that would really suck. Yeah, that's been the, um, a common theme on TV shows, especially this last year or two on the medical shows, which as you know, I watch a lot of them. There was, uh, it was on Grey's, it was on Chicago Med. Yeah. <clears throat> it was on um, The Resident, which I think is a Canadian show. Although it's set in Georgia, I believe. It's set in the US somewhere, yeah. Cause yeah, unlocking away people's medical information is definitely going to cause chaos. Yeah, we're really, uh, we get dependent on technology very easily, especially the younger you are and you've never known it any other way, right? I had somebody who's, uh, their key fob died in their car and they didn't realize that they could actually unlock their car using the physical key. <laughs> But I mean, I guess if they've only ever had keyless entry, they wouldn't realize that, right? Yeah. Or yeah, when I was uh, watching MASH with my teenager and uh, I had to explain what carbon paper was because now they have the carbonless right? Where it does do the transfer in triplicate or whatever, but there's no actual carbon paper. 
I remember when that came out, it was like magic. Because, <clears throat> yeah, my mom would sometimes, when the carbon paper she had was completely, you know, pretty much used up and couldn't be used anymore for typing, she'd give it to us and we would have so much fun, you know, putting it between pieces of paper and drawing and seeing it appear like magic on the bottom piece. <clears throat> it was great until you got your hands all grubby, right? <laughs> then you were leaving carbon fingerprints everywhere. Ooh. Like, that's another one. They said they don't ink fingerprint you anymore. They can just scan it. Because, yeah, I remember being uh, fingerprinted when I was in um, elementary school for that uh, child find. Yeah. And I remember even then thinking, okay, it's supposedly so they can identify you if you ever get kidnapped. I said, yeah, but I bet they also like just having your prints on file, right? <laughs> oh, in case you ever commit a crime. Oh. But then a lot of these agencies don't talk to each other because like, yeah, my husband said he had that done for child fine too. And then when he went in the military, they had to retake them, of course. And so, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of times people assume everything goes to like some kind of central database, but no, a lot of times different organizations do not share information. And so just because one guy's got it on file doesn't mean anyone else is going to have access to it. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it's like I remember they had an online health thing so that you can track all your medications and stuff online and supposedly all the stuff on your medical record, I looked up and like most of the stuff wasn't even there. Two, three, four, five, six. Like um, supposedly it lists your surgeries. It didn't list any of mine. So, yeah. And it could be because um, our hospital is, um, it's on the border because we are a border city. So half of it's in one province and half's in another. And so technically for me, the hospital is out of province because it's across the border. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, if the provinces don't share information, then it's a lot harder to see it. So And I suppose that's how you end up with those stories of where a guy will be a bigamist or something because he marries in different states and they don't cross-check with each other. So, yeah, they don't realize the guy's already married in one state and he's marrying someone else in another without being divorced from the first one. Ugh. Okay, I'm going to have a lot of this dark purple. Yeah, I can see it's kind of moving, crossing all over the place, so that is okay. Yeah, I still have over 3,000 of this color left, so. <clears throat> yeah, like I remember watching Criminal Minds, and they would be having to scour multiple databases to compile stuff on a on a suspect, so. Yeah. Information was there, but nobody had time to put it together until the person became a suspect, right? So. Pardon me. Allergies gave me a stuffy nose last night, so I had to breathe through my mouth, so my throat is kind of a little sore. I took a test this morning just to be sure it wasn't COVID, but it is not, which I figured it wouldn't be, but better to know and not go out spreading it around, right?
Okay. That's a real standout bright color there. <clears throat> These pinky and purpley flowers are really pretty. So, husband got to go golfing today with the Ruth people. He forgot his uh, golf clubs. <laughs> so after he texts me, oh, I won't be home for lunch today, he shows up. I said, you forgot your golf clubs? He says, yep. <laughs> oh, dear. One time he drove several hours to a big city to pick something up with his tape measure in his pocket. He thought it was his wallet. Uh, so then he had to drive all the way back and then go all the way out again. Oh my gosh. Good one, hun. Because, yeah, he just did the whole patch your pockets and, oh, okay, there it is. And, yeah, it was not. <laughs> okay, so that is a short one. Okay, that's why I always check the length of the threads then. This will be good for the one stitch that it's parked in, and the other one is the one I'll carry around. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, it was funny. It came up in my Facebook memories today where people had a game you would start typing out to song lyrics and then letting your autocomplete finish it. Yeah, so some of them were quite funny. I had a rode through the desert on a horse with a hat and uh, I touched the reins down in my house <laughs> and uh, nothing I can say a total eclipse of my face was one I came up with, so. That's fairly long. I think this one is two, so yeah, I kind of have a wealth of riches here, but that's okay. That's all right. Ends up being too many threads. I just end one off and save it for later. Okay, there's a thread I can finish off. Perfect. Mm. 
Just trying to see where I want to go from here. Okay, just gonna see this section I may split somewhat. Okay, I think this parked one is short, if I remember. Yeah. So we'll start a new one for the ones in the corner. Okay, actually I have to grab a whole new thread. <clears throat> oh, I'll be under a thousand color soon. Yeah, finally getting on that home stretch. I'm guessing six months from now it takes me about three. So five, six months because the last pass across this uh, pattern is um, five, five squares instead of six. Because yeah, I have 11, 11 squares downwards. So we're doing six in one pass and five in another. Or I might do five in this pass and six in the other. It kind of seems what how comfortable my hand is at the bottom of the fabric. We shall see. Okay, so a short one for here. Ooh. So, so far, so good. Everything appears to be recording okay, but... The real test is when I want to try and use the footage later, so. 
Ugh. Yeah, it was not my day. Oh, this is why I don't wait till the last minute to make the video. Try not to pull anything else with my working thread. Oh, there's the garbage collector. <laughs> Boy, it's loud today. Yeah, we have three that gets uh, collected where we are. <clears throat> we have a compost one for biodegradable stuff and then an actual garbage one for, you know, plastics and things that can't and then one for recycling things, so. Yeah, when my son was little, he liked garbage tea. He got to see three big trucks go by. is the one I will finish. There we go. <clears throat> Pardon me. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'll need a nap this afternoon, my gosh. Like I'll sleep till 2 a.m., so. Ugh. Okay, fine. Didn't want to come up neatly, so I'll go the other way and go down in the crowded hole instead of trying to come up that way. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Uh. Now the garbage can's getting the other side of the street. <laughs> mm. Oh, pardon.
I may carry this down just a little bit more. Yeah, actually do that. Still not closing anything in, so. I like when I get to do a bunch at once. <laughs> and this way, those number two stitches, I can do more of them because I'll have done all the stuff that's to the left and above them. So that's why I chose to do that. Come on. There we go.
There, so now, yeah, I kind of wish I could pull the pattern in sort of over further than the edge of the, the uh, stitches shown. It's a small complaint, but yeah. Because I like having the area that I'm stitching to be sort of in the center of my screen. So I have to sort of shift the whole tablet over when I'm working near the edges. But, I mean, that's a minor nitpick. Yeah, it's such a good program that that's just a very small complaint. Okay, so yeah, big blocks of color often end up with uh, multiple threads in them. Well, the thing is, even if I was stitching cross country, when you have a lot of uh, stitches of a color, you'd end up having to use more than one thread anyway, so I find it works out kind of the same. If I could actually thread my needle, that is. Okay. All right, so just making sure I'm in the correct spot. There we go. when there's other colors sort of scattered through they create sort of a natural break point between threads for me since I don't like to close stuff in so yeah kind of works out but if it doesn't work for you you know like I've always said you do you you stitch your way as um Karen the needlebug says the only rules in cross stitch are the ones you make for yourself That's right. Find your way.
Yeah, some bigger blocks of color here, so it goes a little faster. Yeah, I kind of uh, did a scan through the rest of my pattern, and there's not as much confetti that I could see in this last approximately quarter amount, quarter of the pattern. So, yeah, we'll see how fast it goes. not want to stay threaded. Yeah, I may have to reset soon. Take my needles off and... Oh, that is a different color than the one I grabbed. Yep. I grabbed actually this one just now. Yep. Which the grid line saved me from making a mistake. Another one here. <laughs> yeah, I would say this looks more confusing than it actually is. Once you get used to it. Okay, it's gonna be a while till I get to that thread, so I'm just gonna unthread it. Yeah, and I think as I'm working sort of my way down here those aside. Leave them threaded for now. I can get back to them when I come back to sort of that area there. Less of a tangle when I have threads kind of tamed that way. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I'm going to carry that thread back up. So what I'm actually going to do is do this. So, I won't do anything out of order. I thought I might have to, but I don't, as it turns out. I think this thread is almost done anyway. We are almost out of stitches. <clears throat> okay. Then I wanted to do this one and carry it back up here and then carry on down again. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of frustrating because I have 
more than one color going here, but it's kind of hard to see that they're different colors because it's a very dark navy blue and a black. But the shading will be nice when it's done. Okay, so I'm thinking all I'm going to get out of this is these. And then that'll be it. Yeah, five stitches is about what I'm going to get out of that. So yeah, you can kind of see it's going to form a sort of a more vertical line here as you get into the pillar area. Yeah, and I always tell myself, oh, let's just stitch a crotchet die across it diagonally but then I never do <laughs> so I stop pretending I'm gonna do that just go with what the colors tell me to do what seems to work Okay, so that's another one I can end off, get my needle back. I'm just gonna scan, but yeah, there's nothing nearby. So nowhere to park it. A lot of dark colors in this section so I feel safe to pin stitch. <clears throat> feeling tired today. I may get some more work done on my firefly piece. So I'm still working at that background. Yeah, I think I have something like 30,000 stitches of that <laughs> background area. So yeah, and I've done like I think 6,000 of them. So yeah, we still got a ways to go. I've done like one and a half percent of the total stitches of that project. So yeah, it's huge. Now that's why I'm after this one is done. I'm planning a smaller one for my main piece just as a bit of a break. I do love my great big projects, but yeah, sometimes it's nice to also have something that's uh, completed quickly. For a break. It's like I night I like knitting lace. Sometimes a, a plainer part of a sweater is a nice break too. I save those for um trips. Because yeah, I have one I started years and years ago, but it has cables on the yoke of the sweater, and then the bottom is all plain knit. So that plain knit part is uh, taking forever. Yeah, and it's a very small, um, skinny yarn, so it takes more stitches, so, yeah. I don't know if I'll ever be done. <laughs> yeah, I find uh, finding thinner yarns that are a solid color and not multicolor, because I find the sock yarn size, which is very, very thin, is usually multicolor because people like, you know, stripey and fun patterns on their socks but if you want a sweater 
which for me, especially if it's got cables, I don't really want too much color going on or it might be too kind of busy looking. So, yeah. Knit Picks is where I got one that was um, a wool acrylic blend, I think. Or it's a cotton acrylic blend, yeah. So the acrylic helps it keep its shape, but the cotton keeps it from being too hot. And I think it was intended as a solid colors soft yarn, but you can use it for other stuff too. Kind of find the only yarn that doesn't really work well for garments is like the handicrafter cotton, which is made for like dishcloth scrubbies and stuff. Because yeah, it's not meant for clothes. It's too stiff and thick. It wouldn't drape nicely. It's meant for heavy duty stuff. Like I said, like pot holders and dishcloths and things. I remember for a while they came out with a scented one. Yeah, somebody was saying they couldn't figure out, they didn't realize they'd bought it and they couldn't figure out where that smell was coming from and it was the yarn. <laughs> oh, sure glad I didn't buy that because yeah, most, um, most scented stuff ugh, gives me headaches and makes me feel nauseated. Like, I hate going into the um, laundry soap aisle because of all those different smells. Like, ugh. So I know what I want, so it's kind of like take a deep breath, run down that aisle, grab what I need as fast as I can and get out of there. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> yeah, my mother-in-law loves scented stuff, but yeah, it's not for me. There are very few scents that I can stand and I have to I have to be careful what brands I buy. It's harder to find a unscented lotions, but that's what I need. There's a Vaseline Intensive Care hand lotion that is unscented, so I will be devastated if they ever uh, discontinue it, that's for sure. It's like my mother-in-law, she always buys me some scented lotion for like Christmas gifts and stuff. And it's like, oh, I appreciate the thought, but a lot of times I can't use it. The smell makes me downright ill. So, yeah. Okay, I'm going to carry this all the way back up here for now. There we go. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm kind of filling in this diagonal sort of a slightly different doing the bottom part of it and then sort of the top part that's just what i felt like doing so Sometimes I kind of go more from 
right to left and then sometimes they go from left to right just sort of whatever hugs that edge it doesn't close stuff in is what I do or yeah I've seen um like I said needle ninja she does the snake back and forth across hers so yeah I like watching all the different ways people people find to do this I think it's really neat my goodness, ah, there we go. I was trying to form a knot, but we do not want that to happen. Okay. Oh, that went really quick. Huh. Yeah, look at that. We're almost at 200 stitches in an hour. Noise. Yeah, those bigger areas go pretty fast. Let's see if I can get what I can get out of this. I think after these four, I will have enough for those three more. And then that'll be it. <laughs> Wind is picking up probably could hear that snap pop of my uh <laughs> yeah that's my windows yeah I didn't know when we switched over that's one thing that's kind of frustrating especially in the winter when the heat kicks on they make a popping sound and wakes me up uh even with earplugs in yeah I had to have the doctor increase my uh sleeping medication because I wasn't getting any sleep and I have been on the same dose for like 14 years, so I guess I had a good run. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do this number two symbol, the black 310. And then I think we're going to head up a bit, up the diagonal. To carry on from there. So these I might have crossed as I go if I wanted to end up at the bottom here, but I actually want to end up back at the top. That's just the path that seems to make the most sense to me, so. still threaded it is not okay so so what I'm gonna do is kind of tuck these away and then we're actually gonna go back up a bit yeah fill this sort of area right here in that's what I'm gonna do Some of these are already threaded, so we will work with that. So I did not have to reset yet, because sort of had enough threads that I finished off or parked out of the diagonal and unthreaded them. So now I have fewer needles in place, so fewer tangles. 
At least that's the idea. These are nice bright pops of color among this uh, dark area here, this sort of background shadow area. a lovely squeak. <laughs> there we go. It's like a styrofoam squeaky sound. <laughs> Not pleasant. Okay, 917. <laughs> So, I think I'm going to call it a day pretty soon. Cross my fingers that this footage is usable. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, my luck has turned. <laughs> This is the area I've got sort of a bunch of these purple, so I definitely shouldn't have to close anything in. I got quite a quite a selection here to work with. I have a small piece of that lone stitch there. Perfect, I do. Make sure I am in the right spot because I almost put that in the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah, that's 300, that's 310. So now I know I'm in the right spot. OK, 
Okay, so I think I'm gonna call it a day there and hope that everything I made today was useful. So um, thank you so much for joining me today and I hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.